This is the uh, first video in the AP Physics C Electricity and Magnetism book. Um, we're covering chapter 21, sections 1 through 4 on electric charge. Okay, so just a couple quick basics about what charge is. Um, we can either define charge as positive or negative. It's a pretty arbitrary um, designation that we gave to it. Um, charges with the same sign are going to attract each other. Charges with the opposite signs are going to repel each other. So for instance, if we have our two particles here, they're opposite, so we know that they're going to attract. If you had two of the same charges, like so, they would repel. And again, if they were both negative, they would also repel. So if you look off to the right over here, um, it's showing you a glass rod. Um, both glass rods are positively charged, so we know that they're going to want to repel each other, as you can see here. If we look at um, glass rods, one's positively charged, excuse me, one's glass and one's plastic. One's going to be negatively charged, one's going to be positively charged, um, and they're going to want to uh, move towards each other. Just a couple quick definitions. Um, conductors are going to be any material that freely allow the flow of electrons or charge. Um, some examples are metals, uh, copper is a very common one, um, the human body, tap water. Um, and the reasons we say tap water is because tap water is going to have minerals and ions in it that allow the flow of electricity. Um, if we look down at the next one, non-conductors, they're going to be things like rubber, plastic, uh, glass, or pure water, um, and they're not going to allow the flow of electrons. Now, we usually, normally call non-conductors insulators, as you can see here. Um, semiconductors are some kind of intermediate in between conductors and insulators. Um, the common applications are in computer chips. And then superconductors are materials that allow free-flowing um, of electrons, so there's no resistance. Um, uh, superconductors are generally very cold um, in the, you know, well below zero Celsius um, in the low Kelvins. All right, so a couple of things to think about when we're talking about atoms. I mean, why do we, why are conductors conductors and why are insulators insulators? Well, it's the setup of the atoms. Um, when you have a bunch of conducting um, materials put into a solid, it's going to allow the flow of electrons in that solid, and that's what allows conductors um, to have a flow of, elect of electricity. Um, when atoms of a conductor come together to form a solid, some of their outermost, so their loosely held electrons, uh, become free to wander about the solid. Um, so that leaves behind positively charged ions. Okay. Okay, so here's an example. What, what if we had a neutral rod? So if the, if the rod was copper and it was neutral, so it didn't have any initial charge, and we brought a negatively charged um, rod close to it. Well, as you can see, what would happen is this negatively charged, since we know negative repels, it's going to push the negative electrons over to the other side, and when you push away the electrons, you're going to get a positively charged on this side. So you would end up with an attraction force, even though overall that the rod is neutrally charged. Um, this is going to cause this um, movement of, of charge. So you, you end up with an attractive force. Now another example for this, um, let's just say we had a plate, like so, and we'll say this one's neutral. Okay, and we had another plate over here, and let's call this one positive. So let's say, say this whole plate here is going to be positive. And since the top plate is neutral, what's going to happen is the, the uh, again, opposites are going to repel, so the positives are going to want to push towards the top of the plate over here. And you end up with half the plate being somewhat more positive, and you end up with the bottom of the plate being somewhat more negative. So again, you're going to have 
this attractive force between the two. So the force of repulsion or attraction due to electric, uh, choose, excuse me, due to charge properties is called electrostatic force. Um, so this force that we're getting between um, two charged particles or two charged objects, we're going to call electrostatic force, and we're going to note that by F. That's that F right here. Now the equation um, for electrostatic force is given by Coulomb's law. So the force is equal to K. Q1, Q2 over R, whoops, let's get back there, over R squared, and we have the unit vector R at the end. Okay, so what are each of these things? Well, K is going to be a constant. If you look down here, you can see the K is equal to 8.99 times 10 to the ninth. Newton times meter squared over Coulomb squared. That also breaks down to this 1 over 4 pi times the permittivity constant, um, which is given here. Okay, so what are these Q's? Well, the Q's are going to be the charge for each of the particles. So um, if we have, let's say, a positive charge here and a negatively char charge here, we can say that's going to be Q1 and that's going to be Q2. So that'll be the value of the charge. Now the radius is going to be the distance between the two particles. So that would be this distance right here. That's going to be R. And the unit vector for the force, well that's going to depend on what the two particles are. So if you have a positive charge and a negative charge like this, we know that the force is going to be acting towards the center because they're going to want to um, get pushed together. So R is going to be like this. But let's say if we had two negative charges like this, if there were two negative charges, we know that our R vector would have to be facing out like that. Okay. All right, so here's just an example of what I just showed. So anytime you have the same um, charged particles here, you know that the force is going to be going outwards. Um, when they're uh, opposite charge, are going to be going inwards. Okay. So another concept we need to talk about is current. So current's going to be the rate, dq dt, at which charge moves past a point or through a region. Um, so it's going to be the rate at which charge moves. All right, so we're going to note that current with I. Right, so I is going to be our current. DQ is just um, the amount of charge. Moving past a point. And then dt is going to be your time increment. Okay. All right, so with this equation, we know that q is going to be in coulombs, which is going to be denoted by c. Current is going to be in amperes, which is denoted by a. Um, and then time will obviously use in seconds. So if we want to know what a coulomb is, well, we can say that it's amp seconds. So one coulomb is one amp times one second. Okay, so if there's n charged particles, I mean there's a lot of charged particles, um, the force on one of those particles by all the particles is just the sum of the vector, uh, it's, it's just the vector sum of the forces. So that's what it's showing here. So if I wanted to know, if I had a particle over here, and I had a whole bunch of other particles, some could be positive, some could be negative, it doesn't matter. Each of them are going to have forces on each other, so this one is going to be a repulsion force, this would be an attractive, 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 and repulsive. Okay, all you have to do is sum up all of the forces. And that's going to give you what the total force or the net force on this charged particle is. So 
As with the gravitation force law, the Snell or the Shell theorem has analogs to electrostatics. Um, so if we're talking about the shell of, of a uniform charge attracts or repels a charged particle that's outside the shell as if all the shell's charge are concentrated at its center. So for instance, if I had a shell of charge, and let's just say this is positive all the way around. So this is just a thin shell, like a copper ball that has a hollow center. And there was some particle over here. We can simplify this shell as to just one charge acting at its center. So that since they're opposite, they're going to act like this. Now, if a charged particle is located um, inside the shell, there's going to be no net electrostatic force on it. So again, if here's our shell, and this is positive all the way around. If we had a charge inside, so let's say we had a charge right here, no matter where you put it inside, there's going to be a net of zero force on it. Um, so for instance, if it was close to this left side over here, we know that the force is going to be a little bit stronger. But there's more force on this side, even though it's slightly weaker. The force on the other side, uh, there's more of it. So no matter where you put it inside the shell, it's going to be a net of zero force. Okay, so that's the end of this lecture. In the next lecture, we're going to be going over some example problems.